In today's video, we will briefly review common misconceptions when working with fractions, what fraction models could be used, and the multiple meanings of fractions. In previous grade levels, students have built a foundation for fractions using a variety of manipulatives and models that will help them be successful with the concepts taught in this chapter. Students have learned that the numerator of a fraction indicates how many of the equal parts of the whole are being considered or counted. The denominator indicates the size of the fractional pieces being counted and the number of copies it takes to create the whole. Even though a fraction seemingly has two parts, a fraction is a number with a single value. Let's begin with some common misconceptions that occur when working with fractions. One misconception that can occur is that the numerators are added or subtracted and the denominators are added or subtracted. For example, 3 fourths minus 1 half is solved by taking 3 minus 1 for a difference of 2 and 4 minus 2 for a difference of 2 for a final answer of 2 halves. This is incorrect. In order to add or subtract, a common denominator must be found in order to subtract same sized pieces. Another misconception that can occur is the idea that multiplying any two numbers results in a larger number. This is not the case with fractions. In fact, it is the exact opposite. For example, 1 half times 3 fourths equals 3 eighths. Notice the product is smaller than either of the factors. Another misconception to consider is fractions can only be represented with one numerical representation, when in fact they can be represented three different ways, as fractional form, decimal form, and percent form. Percents will not be introduced until sixth grade. Now let's move on to discussing the different fraction models and when it's appropriate to use them. There are a variety of models that should be used because an over-reliance on just one model is detrimental to the development of a complete understanding of fractions. One fraction model that is commonly used is the fraction circle. They are often used as an introduction to area model fractions because the whole is more apparent than using a continuous fraction strip model. Here are a few other models representing the same two sticks shown earlier. It is important to show a variety of models because it is difficult to model operations such as multiplication in fourth grade and fifth grades with circle models. The best manipulatives are those that do not have the fractional parts labeled so that the size of the whole can be varied instead of always being marked as one. After students have had enough practice using manipulatives, they will be encouraged to draw out their thinking. Using pictures to represent mathematics creates a bridge between the concrete and the abstract. However, students must be careful to be as precise as possible in order to compare fractions or identify equivalents. Grid paper is also a great tool to create equivalent drawings, as seen here to compare one-half and one-third on a number line. For fraction circle models, students will be encouraged to use stencils or trace around something round to ensure models are the same size whole. When inaccurate models are drawn, such as this one, it is possible to think two-thirds is equal to five-eighths, when in fact it is greater than five-eighths. Models are a great way to justify students' thinking, not the other way around. Discussion is another useful tool for students to clarify their thinking. Throughout their learning, using language to discuss students' thinking is essential in helping students develop ideas that will eventually lead them to discovering and understanding algorithms. Finally, writing about fractions allows students to further solidify their understanding of the concept as they use the vocabulary related to the topic. It also allows the teacher to get a glimpse of how students process the information that led them to their answers. Jumping straight to algorithms rather than teaching students to use manipulatives and mental reasoning will not help them in their mathematical understanding. Students need experience of all types so that they may choose the type of strategy that makes most sense. Now let's move on to the multiple meanings of fractions. Students have learned fractions as part whole models using area models, length models, and set models. The focus is on how many parts make up the whole. The second way students viewed fractions was in terms of measurement. The focus was on identifying an amount of continuous length and comparing that amount to an amount equal to one. Students learned that the repeated placement of unit fractions n to n can represent lengths on a number line. 
Another aspect of measurement with fraction involves telling time, including recognizing an hour on a clock as the number of half hour or quarter hour increments. In fifth grade, students will view fractions as division. Division of the numerator by the denominator is also known as sharing. For example, if five siblings want to share a 10 pound bag of candy, they will each get two pounds. Another way students view fractions in fifth grade is as an operator. An operator indicates that an operation should be used, and in the case of fractions, multiplication and division are combined. For example, what is three-fourths of eight cups of sugar? Students could divide by four, then multiply by three, as seen here. The model shows eight units partitioned or divided into four equal parts, which equals two units. The two units are then multiplied by the numerator three for a final answer of six units. Three-fourths of eight is six. Students could also multiply the numerator first, then divide by the denominator. Start by drawing the eight units or eight cups, then multiply by three to get 24. Next, divide the 24 units into four groups for a total of six in each group. Three-fourths of eight is six. In today's video, we briefly reviewed common misconceptions when working with fractions, what fraction models could be used, and the multiple meaning of fractions. Prolonged exposure and effective discourse strengthens conceptual understanding of fractions. Number sense of fractions and fluency with fraction computation requires the discourse, exposing students to the reasoning of others.